We're back. We're back and better than ever. This is the Do Sports Podcast. Here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all major platforms. Thank you for tuning in. I'm yours truly, I was Deuce. On the Do Sports Podcast. Let's get right into it. Jimmy freaking Butler. Jimmy freaking Butler. What else is there to say? I mean, last couple of years, we've been introduced to playoff Jimmy, right? Averages 22, 23 points a game, five to six assists a game, five rebounds, five to six rebounds a game, makes second or third round on third, um, third team NBA. Makes a playoff, makes a pro uh, all star game every now and then, and he's a good player. I mean, he's a quality player, all star level player. <clears throat> but never, nobody ever looks at him as, as as like a superstar and whatnot. And the last couple of years, man, we've just been seeing greatness once the playoffs starts, man, and. It confuses us because we're like, man, is he a superstar or is he not? Because in the play, in the regular season, he only averages twenty two to twenty three points a game, right? He is a superstar, man. Let's 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 end that now. Let's end that conversation now. It's over. He's a superstar. Period. Point blank. Um. And. To be honest, man, like, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that this team can make it all the way, man. This is going to be one of them years, man. One of them years where a team comes out of nowhere and a team that everybody doubts every game, even being up 2-0 against the Boston Celtics, winning at their place, right? Winning, Winning at the Garden right, in Boston, people are still doubting the Heat saying that they're not going to win this series. Now, here's the thing, man. Jimmy Butler is on another level at this current moment. And it's a level where, listen, I've never watched Jordan play. I'm too young for all that. But you ever watch somebody play and he knows what's about to happen? It hasn't happened yet. But then his facial expression shows like, hey, uh, y'all in trouble, man. Watch this. I said this on my radio show. He's an incredible. He's an incredible. He's part of an incredible family. They try to live with the earthlings. They 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 stay, you know, you know, on on uh on you know they look they 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 try to remain unseen, try to remain under the radar. Meanwhile, they have all these superpowers. Shouts out to the Miami Heat, and I'm not gonna lie to you, you know. I'm kind of happy we matched up with Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. It's poetic justice. The reason why I say it's poetic justice is I believe last year, with a worse team, we should have made the finals last year. All right? But then again, if we made the finals last year, would we have won the championship last year? I don't know. But by us losing last year and coming back this year well prepared more experienced you know learn from our mistakes from um from the um the previous year not only do i believe that we've learned our mistakes and we've we've learned um we've we, we became been better for last year and to the and to the point where we're going to advance and the Eastern Conference Finals to the Finals, but now I feel like, in my opinion, we have a shot to win the championship altogether. 
because last year made this team better, right? Last year made Jimmy Butler better, right? And, um, you know, Boston, is, it's, it's, a, it's a sweet feeling because they have this gravitas towards them. They have developed some type of confidence, false confidence, or this arrogance that they're are supposed to be like, are they a team that should be reckoned with, or they're a team that they they are a team that you know should be looked at as amongst the great? Well, newsflash: you haven't won a championship. You have not won a championship. Where is this confidence coming from? Where is this gravitas coming from? Right? And last night, I kid you not, we were down 11 in the third quarter. And I was the slightest bit scared. I was... I was the slightest bit of of um um of of doubtful in that game. I had every confidence in the world that Miami was going to come back and win this game. Like Shaq always says on the telecast, I don't know if you guys watched the in the um TNT telecast. Shaq says this one thing. He says, "Listen, they play the same way all game." Boston, it's too much of this up and down stuff. I can't do it, right? The Miami Heat is a well-oiled machine. They make they they take they make they make sure to get their maintenance done. They make sure to check their oil. They make sure every three thousand miles their oil gets changed. They make sure that the transmission fuel is up to, up to par. They make sure the steering wheel fluid is up to par. They're a well-oiled machine. They make sure they're aligned, they're in alignment. It's a well-oiled machine, man. A car that's perfectly maintained, right? It goes it's the same way. Play after play, possession after possession, possession after possession, right? And quite honestly, I see it in their spatial expressions when I'm watching the game. They're down 11, 12 points. They're the slightest bit worried. They're just like you could see, you could. It was so much composure on their facial expressions. Their mindset was like, "All right, next play, let's go, let's go." Hey, make sure you're over there. Hey, make sure you're over here. Nobody's worried. Nobody's frantic. Nothing. Next play. Right. And um, this will be officially called the 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 Grant William game. Like. This is what I don't understand, and he, he was one of those. He was one of those guys that was, um, you know, that got, um, immersed into the gravitas, immersed into the, the confidence, the false confidence, and whatnot. You're a good player, good defensive player, but you still have a lot of development to go as a player. What happened was with Grant Williams, as the success of the team went, the more false, the more more false confidence grew with him. So now, guess what? Now you're not focused. Now you're not grounded, right? In terms of your development, right? Because you're not grounded, you 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 stop working on what you need to work on to continually grow as a player and to continually stay on the court. As your false confidence grew, your play declined, right? That's why you ended up out of the lineup, right? It took you some humbling. You've learned. You've, you've, you've grasped. And the the second time, the, uh, I'm pretty sure whenever you got another shot, you were going to make sure that you, 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 you bring something to the table so you could stay on that court. And I could see that. The last couple of games, I've seen you get another shot, and I've seen you made great plays at certain junctures of the game. So I've seen that improvement as a player with Grant Williams. 
But there's one thing. There is one thing that I guess he still kept with him, or he he still didn't learn, and it was the the false confidence, man, and it was the 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 um the arrogance was still in him. Like he tried to bury it. He tried to just you know be part of the team. He tried to just, you know, do whatever the team needs. But once he started making a couple of shots, right, and then the team was up 10-11 in the third quarter, his mindset, man, we got this in the bag. We're not for the to give up this lead. <laughs> Let me talk my junk. Let me make a name for myself. I'm on national television. We win this game, and I do this to – and I and I do all that to Jimmy Butler. Guess what? I'm the. I, they're talking about me next game. They're talking about me against Jimmy Butler next game. Now my 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 stature is back up, right? The Dylan the Dylan Brooks effect, right? Sir, 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 you did it to the wrong guy, man. Not Jimmy freaking Butler, man. You ain't doing. You can't do that to Jimmy freaking Butler, man. I'm sorry. Because you went back to your old tendencies with the false confidence, with the arrogance, and stuff like that. And guess what? You went away from your game. You were less focused, right? Believe it or not, when you act like that, you're less focused. You're not as grounded. You're not as, um, you know, equipped to continually play the way you need to play because you're exerting some of your energy towards the antics, some of your energy towards making a show, right? Right? Now, Jimmy Butler's looking at you and giving you that grin like, bruh, chill out, bruh. Right? After that, then you go into the man's face, rubbing in his, going into his forehead, making a big scene. Oh, you done lit the fire, my boy. You done lit the fire. You don't poke the bear. Right? You don't poke the bear. You should have learned that from Dylan Brooks. Right? After that 20 to 9 run, Heat takes the lead. Heat don't give up the lead. And now you are down 2 0 against some eight seeded Miami Heat. And now everybody's calling this the Grant Williams game. Congrats to you, brother. Congrats to you. You just made a whole lot of people angry towards you. And you just made made a mockery of yourself for that day. Granted, I get it. You know, there is um people who 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 are okay with what you did, who are okay with what? Oh, that's competition. That's competition. Yeah, but if I'm a teammate of Grant Williams and I'm looking at him staring, poking the bear, and <laughs> Jimmy Butler. I'm pissed off because my mind says like this, bro, we up 11, bro. You started with that man. He took over. Now we lost, right? Jalen Brown was on the podium and they asked him, hey, um, uh, what was your mindset on Grant Williams poking the bear? 
in terms of Jimmy Butler? Do you feel like that will contribute to to a loss? He said, next question. And this, I, have another, I have another problem with this, right? This is Now, this is completely a different topic, but it's still talking about Boston. Joe Malou, Missoula. Like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Right? You come in this game and you pretty much turn Jason Tatum into the point guard. And I get it. Have him initiate offense. But Joe Malazula, you forgot you have Jalen Brown on the team. Like, I don't understand this. Jalen Brown, everybody's looking at Jalen Brown. I mean, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum. I say this all the time. I personally feel like Jalen Brown is the best player on the team. But I'm I'm one of the minority. Why? How about have Jalen Brown initiate the offense? Right. Listen, this is there's a bigger story here, man. Jalen Brown, you heard it here first on the Do Sport podcast. Jalen Brown will ask for a trade this offseason. I just I can see it. I can feel it. He will ask for a trade this offseason because guess what? He is also a superstar, an all-star, borderline superstar player. And if Jason Tatum is a superstar player, I'm mad, that, that, but I might as well just say Jalen Brown is a superstar player. He has super, superstar capabilities, superstar tangibles that is not being exercised. So now, if I'm somewhere and I feel like my all my talents is not being utilized, Right now we're losing too old to an eight seated team and whatnot. Everybody Jason Tatum this, Jason Tatum that, bruh. And deep down inside, I know he feel like he better than Jason Tatum, bruh. He's gone, man. Right, and on top of that, I don't know, man. This is supposedly supposed to be like a a, a very talented team. If that's the, I'm not gonna lie to you. Granted, that situation happened, but you should have kept Ime Doka as the head coach. Why did you let him go? You suspended him. He he was out multiple years, multiple games. Why couldn't he come back? He did not commit a crime. He committed a spiritual crime, an infidelity, adultery, and whatnot. But he didn't commit a a a a, a crime like like on, on on this earth. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is like this. You should have kept Emei Doka. Joe Mazzulla did a great job. I'm not gonna take that away from him and whatnot. I'm not gonna take that away from him. But clearly it shows he is still developing and learning as a head coach. He's done a great job learning on the fly. I give him that. He's done a great job. It's not his fault. He's just trying what he can. But one thing I will say, though, even, like, especially with the offense, I've seen him, (coughs) I'll give him credit where credit's due, right? When it comes to the offense, I've seen him, right? I've seen him change the offense game in and game out. The reason why, how, let, let, me, let me break that down. I have seen him game in and game out literally change how the offense is played. Change how the offense is being ran. Change how to change the schemes of the offense. So he does a great job when it comes to figuring out or trying or, or changing up schemes. Like, okay, you'll see some other coaches, they're getting whooped. They're getting their tails whooped in a playoff series. The next game, they're, doing, they're running the same stuff. 
Joe Mazzula, you can't say that about Joe Mazzula. The next game, he'll literally change things up, and they'll play a completely different way. I give him that. But I haven't seen him do in-game adjustments as good as he should. And I, I'm not going to lie to you. The way Ime Igudoka used to be up in these man's behinds in terms of the defensive end, he don't got that. He hasn't done that, and he hasn't reached that point yet. The defensive level, the defensive intensity that Boston has shown in this playoffs compared to last is night and day. Night and day. And that's one of the problems right now. That's one of the reasons why they went six in, in, um, in, in Atlanta. That's one of the reasons why they went seven against Philly, right? They went six against Philly, sorry, right? That's one of the reasons. No, they went seven against Philly. That's one of the reasons. Now, and that's another reason why you down 2-0 against the Heat. The defensive intensity is not where it should be. The offense is the offense. You're going to have Jason Tatum scoring 25. You're going to have Jalen Brown scoring 20-25, um, right? You're going to have the Derek Wrights in the world from the bench scoring 11. you got a great bench. You got, you're going to have Malcolm Brogdon's of the world scoring 13 off the bench and whatnot. You're going to have, um, 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 you know, Marcus Smart, Al Horford, and other players on that team, stepping up. You don't have a problem. You don't have a problem with players stepping up on your team. The only problem you got is just doing a better job when it comes to in-game adjustments and and then having the team bring up their intensity defensive-wise. That's my only problem. That's my, what I see with Boston. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I'm watching the game, and I'm like, man, I kind of feel for Joe Mazzulla because my dog, he was put in a situation. Granted, everybody wants to be a head coach, but I'm pretty sure he was like, damn, man, I got thrown into a, a situation that I'm just trying to right the ship, as they say. And he's doing a good job so far until the last couple of games. Right? So, I feel for Joe Mazzula and stuff like that. And quite frankly, kind of like Buddy. Right? But now, shouts out to Eric Spolcher, man. And that's another thing. When I see him, I'm like, okay, everybody clearly says, they got Kenny Smith said it straight up. This is a, a, a way more talented team. Bill Simmons says it. This is just the talent will win out eventually because this is a more talented team. Yes, sir, I understand all that. I hear what y'all saying. But at the end of the day, Eric Spolstra is coaching circles around Joe Mazzula, man. Eric Spolstra is a... should do a class, a coaching master class. He is literally the best coach in the league, in my opinion. And that's ahead of Greg Popovich right now in my opinion. He's coaching circles against um, Joe Benzula, right? Um, he, co- he coached circles against uh, um, 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 the New York Knicks coach, right? And the uh, Milwaukee Bucks coach. This man is literally coaching his team to the finals, right? And it's a ple- man, listen, it's a pleasure to watch. It really is. And um, Jimmy Butler, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'll be watching social media and whatnot, and not be seeing, um, you know, his, uh, his um, when he's coming into the games and stuff like that. His ankle was swollen after the New York series, right? But his ankle 
He played hurt during that New York series. But game by game, day by day, his ankle's getting better. And granted, he still feel a little pain on that ankle. And thank God, game by game, he just finds a way to play. He, 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 and I feel like he, he learned from LeBron how to coast throughout the game and not exert a, a, a whole bunch of energy. And he just knows how to rev up the, 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 rev up the, the intensity in the fourth quarter, right? 41 minutes, 27 points, eight rebounds, six assists. I mean, what else can you want? Bam out of bio, 22 points, 17 rebounds, and nine assists. Bam out of bio just playing out of his mind. He has, he has a bum shoulder, but he's playing through it. Gabe Vincent, 40 minutes, 9 points, 2 rebounds, 0 assists, but he's playing really good defense. Max Struess, 27 minutes, 11 points. Caleb Martin. This man is getting better and better game after game, man. The same thing as, um, as, uh, uh, Matt, uh, um, what's his name? Um, dude from New York. I mean, from LA. The same thing with him, with uh, with Reeves, Austin Reeves. Man, they're getting better, game by game. When I first, when the season started with Miami, I was scared because I'm like, man, we don't have a reliable swing man. <laughs> My mindset was like, why didn't we go back? And try to get uh Crowder, Joe, uh, uh Crowder, trade with Phoenix and get him back, get us a reliable swing man on the three, on the on the on the on, the, on the, as a small four, right? But kudos to to to, to um Pat Riley and giving Kyler Martin a shot and say, listen, man, we've developed this guy. We feel like. You know, he can develop into a good swing man. And Dag Nabbit, 32 points, four rebounds, 25 points. His three ball has developed into a damn near automatic. Um, shout out to Duncan Robinson. I've been saying this, man. I've been saying this. I've been saying this, man, for I don't know how many months, man. My producer for the Do Sports Show, Mitch. I've been saying that he could attest to this. We need to play Duncan Robinson, even if it's for 20 minutes, even if it's for 15 minutes, bro. Duncan Robinson needs to be on that court. Why is that? Because he is a lethal shooter. Period. Point blank. If he's in the funk, let him shoot out of it. He will do better, man. 21 points, 15 points. 21 minutes, 15 points. Kyle Lowry. He only played 17 minutes um, this game, surprisingly. But there's still 17 big minutes um, off the bench. Cody Zeller, um, 10 minutes, 6 rebounds. 6 big rebounds, 2 points. Man, listen, man. We are a well-oiled machine. Field goal percentage, Boston went 37-79 for 47, 46.8 um, percent. The Heat went 42 of 92 for 45 percent field goal. We went 9 of 26 from the three, 34.6 percent from the three. Boston went 10 of 35 from the three, 28.6 percent. Boston went 21 of 24. On the free throw line, we went 18 of 19 on the free throw line. Um, the Heat went 18 of 19 from the free throw line. Disparity, man, Heat get, get these big boy rebounds, 45 rebounds to 35. Offensive rebounds, 11. Boston's to six. Boston's six. Um, uh, listen, look at this stat right here, man. We get cookies, man. The Miami Heat, the Miami Heat had nine steals, man. Nine steals. Nine steals, man. 
That's defense. Elite. Elite defense. Now we go back to Miami. And, man, I, I'm calling it right here, man. I think, I think this might be a sweep. I think this will shock the world, man. This will shock the world, man. The Miami Heat sweeping the Boston Celtics 4-0 in the Eastern Conference Finals, man. It all makes sense. The Heat are a well-oiled machine, man. And they, to be honest, they can't be stopped barring injury. Wow. So, yeah. So, that's how I got that, man. Um, You got the Lakers and Nuggets. They play. The Lakers and Nuggets play. Um. When they play, I think they play today. Eight thirty, and I don't know, man. Uh, this this is one of the two times, one of the few times that I just can't, you know. Just make a bold prediction like that when it comes to that um that that series because you gotta understand the mile high they're a mile ahead of uh, um above um ground above sea level that altitude was something serious man they call that they call that the altitude game man. LeBron James was exhausted. And he take care of his body more better than anybody in this in this in this country. And we're gonna see. This is a legacy defining what's the conference um finals for LeBron James. Because to be honest, I'm quite impressed. I am impressed the fact that they even made it to the Western Conference Finals. Shouts out to their general manager, right? Rob Palinka. He's done a great job. And I need to see this. I need to see if LeBron really is going to pull this out and make it to the final. Right? And he said in the press conference after, you know, losing 2-0, 0-2, losing the second game to them, he said, listen, man, it's the first it's the team, it's the first team to four. Right? He said that. He said it's the first team to four. This ain't the NCAA. This is the first team to four. All right, then. Let's see who make it to four, then. Let's go. And, uh, let's go, man. But, you know, uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Do Sports Podcast. I just came to drop in, you know, my thoughts um, on last night, man. That was great. That was wonderful. Um, uh, just, you know, continue to tune in, and I'll continue to put up my reactions um, during these playoffs and, and, and just other sports uh, headlines in general, man. This is Do Sports Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.